do daily. When someone wash yeah, their face, when someone take shower every day daily as their routine, yeah, as their routine, that's not become ibadah because there is no niyyah. So when we wash our body, yeah, and we will explain which part of body that needs to be washed when we do al wudu, yeah, when we do a niyyah in beginning before we start al wudu, so a niyyah will make our what we do as iba ibadah, yeah, because I will explain later there is a reward from Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whoever done an ablution. Yeah, when he done an ablution like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam done it, he will get reward from Allah subhanahu wa taala. So the first one is niyyah, yeah, because we are human. When we want to do something, we must do niyyah mean intention. Uh, sorry, intent intention. When we yes yeah, stand up and then when we go to the bathroom for example, and then we open the tap, yeah, we wash our hand. What makes us yeah, doing that? What makes us move our body, yeah, go to the toilet or go to the place for wudu? Because our intention is for doing wudu. Doing wudu. And the Shaykh Rahimallah he said, An niyyah mahalluha al qalb. An niyyah mahalluha al qalb. An niyyah, yeah, the place of niyyah is hurt. Yeah. So we're not talking about the different opinion. Yeah, when someone said, "Oh, we have to," yeah, uh, say the niyyah. Yeah, but the Sheikh Rahimullah he said, "An niyyah mahalu hal qalb." Niyyah, the place of niyyah is qalb. When you have something to do, or when you want to do something, when you have intention to do something, yeah, that comes from your heart. And Sheikh Rahimullah also explaining yeah, with the. Uh, with what he said, ma'na niyyah, the meaning of niyyah, qasdu shay' muqtarinun bil fi'l. When someone intends to do something, when something yeah comes from his heart, he wants to do something, muqtarinun bil fi'l, and he doing that. For example, yeah, I'm asking all the brothers here, what makes you sit down here in the mosque now? What is your niyyah? Our niyyah is to listen to the muhadha, muhadha or to listen to the, le the lecture, that is our niyyah. Yeah. So niyyah comes from the heart, yeah, and we also doing doing that. Type that's the first pillar niyyah. When someone go to the toilet, when someone go to the bathroom, and then do a wudu exactly the same way the wudu, yeah, like the others doing it, but he has no niyyah, or he's like sleepwalker, or he. He doing that just to wash or to clean his his body. He doesn't doing that as a wudu, as a wudu, because niyat is very important. Okay. The second pillar, yeah, in the ghoslul wajh wa ghoslul wajh. The second pillar is ghoslul wajh. Wash our face. Yeah, wash our face. And when we want to wash our face, we need to know what face means. Face or al wajh in Arabic, yeah, al wajh means ma yuwajuh bihin nas, something that we use to face someone else. When I talk to brother, for example, or when I talk to brother Diki, for example, I facing him and talk to him. What, yeah, I used to facing him that call wajh, face. This one, yeah, what do we say this in English? Neck, for example, yeah, it doesn't call wajh. Because when I talk to uh, Brother Diki, I don't talk like this, yeah, I talk like, like this, facing him. So face in Arab means what we use to facing someone else when we talk to, to him, yeah. More details, face, yeah, if we facing a mirror, for example, Everything that start from our hair here and ends with the bones here, the place that our beard, yeah, this is called face. And start from our ear, yeah, until the next 
the next one. So everything inside this yeah, circle, it called face in Arab, in Arabic. So the second pillar of wudu is wash our face. وَغَسْلُ الْيَدَيْنِ مَعَ الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ And wash hand with an elbow. In ayah, yeah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about yeah, the wudu, yeah, in Al-Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذَا اَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَةِ yeah, Oh, who believers, yeah, إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَةِ If you want to perform a salah, فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your face وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ And also wash your hand إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ So the Sheikh here use the word which is more satisfying us. Because with word ila in Arabic, yeah, I will explain yeah, there are some opinions when uh, someone tried to understand the ayah yeah, from the Quran when Allah said, Wa aidiakum ilal marafik and also wash your hand until elbow. Al marafik means elbow. Ila in Arabic yeah, could be. For example, wa aidiyakum ilal marafik. This one is elbow. Ila, the first meaning, ila until the edge of an elbow. So the elbow it doesn't include. Yeah. The second means in Arabic, ila, when I say, for example, wash my hand, I wash my hand until elbow. Ilal marafik. Second, second meaning is the elbow is included. So the Sheikh here said, وَغَسْلُ الْيَدَيْنِ مَعَ Also with the, the elbow. Yeah, so, he tried to give yeah, more specific word to us to understand because it's also required when we perform a, a wudu. So, this is the, the, the reason of the, for, uh, the, the difference of uh, opinion in the means of ila. Yeah, ma'na ila. It's like when I say, I go from Thonley to Langford. So there is a border, yeah? In between Langford and Thonley is a railway, for example, at the Spencer Road. When I say, I walk from Thonley to Langford, when I stand at the edge of Langford, between Langford and Thonley, in Arabic, it called, I went to, uh, I walk from Thonley to Langford. Second one, I walk from Thonley to Langford when I already inside Langford. When I already, for example, eh, in this mosque, we are inside Lang Langford. So the Sheikh here, Rahimallah, Jazakallah Khair, may Allah reward him, give us more specific word yeah, to understand when he said, وَغَصْلُ الْيَدَيْنِ مَعَ الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ And Everything that he done here, he wrote down here, I will read yeah, for all brothers one hadith, the complete hadith, which is tell us the story when Prophet ﷺ performed an ablution from beginning until he finished his, his wudu, inshallah. وَمَسْحُ بَعْضِ الرَّأْسِ And wipe some of head. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah here, just an opinion that when someone wipe, yeah, not wash, because in Arabic mas masaha mean wipe. Gosala mean wash with a lot of water. Masaha, even in ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wam sahu biruusikum and masah your head. Masah mean wipe, yeah, with a little of of water. Yeah. Wipe ba'dur ras some part of your head. This is his opinion yeah wa ghuslu rijlayni ma'al ka'bain and the, the 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 next pillar yeah wash feet ma'al ka'bain with an ankle and also sheikh here put a specific word yeah alhamdulillah to us to understand because in ayah also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah said وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ And also wash your feet إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ To, yeah, or until Ka'bain. And why we have to include and put 
elbow and ankle also inside our uh, part of body that need to be washed when we perform our wudu. I will read a hadith from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam follower in the day after insha'Allah, yeah, they will came as a people who have shine, you know, shining because of their body that they wash before when they uh, in dunya, yeah, it will shining in the day after insha'Allah. I will read it after I finish the pillars of al wudu. Wa ghoslu rijlaini ma'al ka'baini and wash the feet until the ankle. What tertib? Tertib, yeah. We that means we do step by step in order, in the correct or order. We can, for example, wash our hand until elbow, and then after that we wash our face, for example. Yeah. So we need to do that in order. And alama Yeah. So that six pillar. Yeah. That Sheikh Rahimahullah said in his book. Some scholars, yeah, they add some more pillars, yeah, that need to be done, and we can't miss it. Like some of them said, Al Mualah, it's also pillar of wudu. Al Mualah, Mualah means we have to do everything continuously when we start washing our face we have to do the next immediately we can't yeah wash our face and then we go to kitchen make some coffee and then come back again and wash our hand yeah this is not called muala it's we, we didn't do that continuously yeah al muala yeah there is no gap yeah between the first part second part third part and and the rest there is a question. Why we didn't start the pillar of wudu with wash hand? Because as we know, and alhamdulillah, most of us know yeah, how to perform an ablution, but we need to make sure, double check, yeah, try to uh, check our uh, way to perform our wudu. Maybe there is some mistake. So we, we just fix it and inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will accept our wudu. Okay, I said, why scholars didn't put wash the hand? Yeah, what do we say in English here? Wrist. Wrist. Yeah. Why did they didn't put that as a pillar of wudu? They put that as a sunnah, something uncompulsory, something just suggested but uncompulsory. All the pillars of wudu, they took it from the ayah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put yeah, the part of body, yeah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O oh believers, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Iza kumtum ila salah, if you want to perform a salah, fagsilu wujuhakum, wash your face. It's the first one. Wa aidiyakum ila al-marafiq, and also wash your hand until elbow. The second one. Wa msahu biru'usikum, and wipe your head. That's number three. Wa arjulakum ilal ka'bain and also wash your feet until ankle. So scholars, yeah, when they read this ayah, they said, Oh, this one that compulsory. This one is wajib. We can't miss this. And something else in wudu, there is a lot of things, yeah, like gargling the water, yeah, and then also inhale water through our nose and blow it out from our nose, yeah. And wash the, no sorry, wipe the, the ears. We will explain everything, yeah. The Shaykh Rahimullah said here, was sunnatuhu ashra. And the sunnah of wudu, that's, if you, if you want to do that, that will make your wudu complete. Yeah. When someone do the wudu only with this six or seven pillars, inshallah his wudu valid. But when someone add a sunnah as well in his wudu, his wudu will be more perfect, 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 yeah, and more come, even more complete. And we are seeking for something more and more come, complete, okay? And Sheikh here said, Wa sunnatuhu ashrah, and the sunnah of wudu, yeah, something uncompulsory, something that if you want to do, you can do that. If you miss it, inshallah, 
your your wudu will still fail it insyaallah there is a, there are 10 sunnah of wudu at tasmiyah awwaluhu and sheikh rahimahullah choose an opinion that tasmiyah say bismillah when you want to start a wudu as a sunnah but i personally choose an opinion that tasmiyah is wajib when someone open the tap and then before he wash his hand he said bismillah as a begin as a beginning i personally i choose as a wajib because there is an hadith from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah said la salata liman la wudu alahu there is no salah no valid salah liman la wudu alahu for who has no wudu when someone didn't do wudu didn't do ablution and then he perform a prayer allah will accept his salah or not as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said here his salah will be unacceptable that's why the importance of wudu we need to make sure we do a wudu like the proper way that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam done it yeah wudu aliman lam yadhkurismallahi alaihi and there is no wudu no valid wudu liman la Yad, liman lam yadhkurismallahi for who didn't say the name of Allah for the wudu yeah. some scholars said la wudu means no complete wudu when someone miss saying bismillah before wudu his wudu will be incomplete I mean like the reward yeah not gonna be hundred percent anyway we try to say bismillah it's very easy yeah we just run away from the the khilaf we run away from the difference of opinion to say it it's very easy yeah say bismillah except when we are inside the toy toilet maybe this is something yeah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us an excuse but when we are outside for example at tap here alhamdulillah yeah outside the the toilet so it's very easy for us to say bismillah Bismillah. Taib. So Sheikh here said Sunnah Wudu. There are ten. The first one Tasmiyah. Say Bismillah. Wa Goslul Kafaini. Yeah. And wash the hand until wrist. Yeah. This is a Sunnah. Yeah. When someone miss it, he open the tap and then start to wash his face immediately before the hand. Yeah. Insha'Allah, his wudu still valid. Qabla idakhalihima fil ina wal madmadah madmadah min gargling. Gar, you put some water inside your mouth and then, yeah, try to shake it, yeah, and then blow it up. Yeah, it's also the the sunnah. Some scholars said, yeah, it's wajib. Yeah, because Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam put an clear order to his companions by saying, "By saying, either tawadzata famadbid order. If you perform al wudu, if you perform ablution, gargling a water. Yeah. Sheikh here put it as a sunnah. And then wal istin shaq." Al istinshak, yeah, means we inhale a water, yeah. When we put a water inside our hand and then we inhale it inside, and then yeah, we blow it up again. It called istinshak, inhaling water, istinshak, and istinthar, yeah, means blowing it out. And it's also sunnah. Some scholars, yeah, said it's wajib. Yeah, and the difference opinion they have a dalil. Yeah. Why they said it wajib? Because Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam still order us to do istinshak even we are fasting. What Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said? Wa balik fil istinshak, and do inhale. The water inside, yeah, through inside your nose, yeah, balir. I mean, like, do it, like, strongly. Do it hardly, yeah. Do it like 
proper. Yeah, because some of us, maybe he just like, just do it like very slow. Yeah, he doesn't want to do it hard. But Prophet Sallallahu order, order us to do it like hard. Why? Because there is a benefit. There is no order from Prophet Sallallahu except behind it there is a, a, a benefit. And from what we learn from the hadith and the explanation of companions, the benefit of istinshaq, it will make the shaitan run away from our nose. Because the shaitan yeah, stay overnight inside our knows something that we can't see of course yeah. but prophet sallallahu said that shaitan at night time they stay over yeah they camping or something inside our nose and when we do istinshak we will chase away yeah yeah we'll make them run away run away and that help us yeah we will be powerful for doing an ibadah. When shaitan inside our nose, we will be lazy. When adhan, yeah, we, we listen to adhan, we heard adhan, yeah, and then we don't want to wake up to perform a salah. That's the bad things when the shaitan is inside our body. By doing this, insha'Allah, and we believe by following what Prophet Sallallahu said, insha'Allah, Allah will yeah, give us strength. And then we wake up, do a salah. Yeah. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Balik fil istinshaq illa an takuna iman. And do it hardly, inhale the water, except when you are fasting. When you are fasting, don't do it very hard. Because we don't want to swallow water when we were, when we, when we were fasting. <laughs> By this, yeah, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell us this, even when we are fasting, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam still telling us to do that, but not in the hard way. That means it's something compulsory. But anyway, yeah, we learn about wudu, yeah, step by step, everything what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do it completely. We learn it to do. We not learn, yeah, when we know all oh, this is classification. This is wajib and this is sunnah. And then we know the sunnah to leave it. No, we learn the sunnah to, to do it as well. Some people when they know, for example, sunnah wudu, yeah, wash the hand, yeah, until wrist, for example, in beginning. Oh, this is sunnah, then I don't want to do it. No, that's the wrong method of learning. The correct way of learning this religion, when we know the sunnah, the sunnah is to, to do. Yeah, we learn it to do it, not we learn it to, to live it. So the sunnah here, okay, let's say we agree if this is a sunnah. Yeah, we agree this is sunnah. Sheikh Rahimullah said, yeah, here it's a sunnah. We learn it to, to do it. Yeah. And then, وَمَزْحُ جَمِيعَ الرَّأْسِ And wipe all the head, it's sunnah. The wajib is, what Sheikh Rahimullah said here, when we wipe some of our head, or for example, this, uh, what do you say in English? This? No, 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 this. Copy, yeah. What do you say in English? Huh? Bro? Pray cap, yeah. Okay, or head or, or imamah or anything else. When we wipe some part of that, it's enough. It's the wajib. As long we we wipe some, some where we don't leave anything, everything. But when we continuing it by wiping all our head, it's wajib. We do a wajib and we do a sunnah. So we get more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَسْحُ الْأُذُنَيْنِ ظَاهِرِهِمَا وَبَاطِنِهِمَا And wipe our ears, ظَاهِرِهِمَا Outside and بَاطِنِهِمَا And inside as well. So outside and in, inside. And the, the easy way to do it is with eh? What do you say in English? Thumb. And then this one? Yeah, it's our finger, but this one? Index, yeah. Index and thumb, like this. Easy. Yeah. Bima in jadidin, with the new water. This Sheikh here said, when we wipe our head, yeah, so don't worry, brothers, all our brothers and sisters, inshallah, we do a practice of wudu next week. Tonight, we just explain, yeah, 
So everyone knows what is the part of our body that needs to be washed, yeah. And next week, all of us, inshallah, we will do a practice out outside, inshallah. And one by one, inshallah, yeah, Allah will make it easy for us. Bima in jadi with the new water. Sheikh here, yeah, said when someone wipe his head and he finish from wiping his head, he need to take a new water and then wipe the the ears yeah there is another opinion yeah that when someone wiping his ears still with the same water but uh, still with the same water that he used to wipe his head and every uh, everyone has a has a dalil yeah so no no uh, need to be like oh this one and that one so everything with the has a the, as a dalil wa takhlil lihyah and also we try to make sure water is yeah uh, touch our inside beard for example yeah if you have a like me yeah this a lot yeah you you make sure that the water touch in the skin inside because when someone washes his face for example and he has very like uh apa lebat lah yeah thick yeah sometimes water didn't come inside yeah so that's why takhlil means you do like this of course there is still some water inside in in your hand and you try to do this to make sure the water touch because some of us has a bit until here for example and it will be yeah cover the his face when someone has a beard and then his beard start from here that's that's yeah that's not a problem but when someone has a beard and then the beard start from here, for example, very thick, for example, yeah, it will cover some of his face. And your face makes sure everything needs to be washed. We can't just wash yeah, our right side of our face and left the, the left side. Yeah? Everything needs to be washed. Inshallah, I will explain the hadith, inshallah. وَتَقْدِيمِ الْيُمْنَ عَلَى الْيُسْرَى And then we do the right side first and then the left, the left side. In everything, when we wash our hand, when we wash our feet, for example, yeah? when we wash our hand until we in the beginning, yeah? we start from the hand, eh, sorry, we start from the right and then after that, the, the left. This is the sunnah from Prophet sallallahu alayhi Wasallam. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the good things, everything in his life, he always prioritized the right side first and then the sec the left side when he wants to wear the uh, the shoes, for example. Yeah, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wear hoof, yeah, something from uh, leather. Yeah, when it's wi winter, for example, when Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wear his clothes. When Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tried to uh, brush, no, no, sisiran, a uh, comb, yeah, his hair start with the right, right side. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is described in the hadith, "Kana yu'jibhu tayammun." Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like to do the right side first, fi tana ulihi when he tried to wear a yeah, slip or shoes and etc. Watarot Julihi when he tried to, yeah, comb his hair. Wa watahurihi when he doing uh, ablution or washing, uh, take shower for junub. Yeah, wa fi shaknihi kulihi in everything as long it's good. When he want to enter the mosque, start with the right hand, eh, so right foot. He want to enter the house. Yeah, with the right one. Yeah, this is very, very good. And Sheikh Rahimullah put it as a sunnah. When someone forgot, and then he start with washing his left hand. Inshallah, his wudu still valid. Yeah, don't, don't worry. Because the thing is, we try to make sure that that our wudu is valid. That's, that's at least our wudu is valid. When some, when we can't reach the the complete the hundred percent of the way the wudu that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam done it. At least we make sure and we try to make our wudu valid in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa taala. 
wa taharatu thalathan thalathan an taharah ya thalathan purification wudu ya washing all the part of prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi our uh, our uh, our body thalathan thalathan three times washing the hands in beginning three times wash the face three times yeah wash the hand until elbow three times right three times and left three times as well and then washing the feet until ankle yeah also three times except head yeah Sheikh Rahimahullah here yeah, yeah, choose an opinion that wiping the head it's only once yeah. when so this is a sunnah three times three times three times that means when someone do every single part only one times one times washing the hand until wrist one time and then wash the face one time and then wash the hand until elbow one time everything one times only once yeah his wudu falit but when someone do it three times his wudu more come complete yeah and there is hadith that some companions said tawadda rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam marratan marratan Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam perform an ablution once, 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 once. And there is another hadith. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tawabba marratain, marratain. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam perform an ablution two times, two times, twice, twice, twice. And there is hadith, and this is the complete one. Yeah, the the top one. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it three times. Thalathan, thalathan. And the last one. Al Muala Sheikh Rahimallah put yeah, doing the ablution continuously as a sunnah. Yeah. We respect yeah, all the opinions, yeah, but we try to not make a gap. Yeah, because when someone wash his face and then he go to the kitchen and then make some coffee, eat some you know food and then come back again, wash his hand. We afraid that yeah the gap, long gap, a yeah, long period will make our wudu infa infalid now i will read the hadith this hadith it's narrated by al imam bukhari and muslim in their books that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day yeah, visited by uthman ibn affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who knows uthman bin affan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Uthman bin Affan is Sahabah and he is Khalifah number three or four. Who is the first Khalifah after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Abu Bakar. Second one? Iman. Umar. The third one? Uthman bin Affan. He is Sahabi. He is the third Khalifah and he is also Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam son in law for who didn't know Uthman bin Affan married two daughter of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Sheikh stop we can't marry sisters together in the same time yes that's correct but Uthman bin Affan married the first one and then she passed away and then married the second one and Prophet and also passed away Ruqayyah and Ummu Kalthum both daughter of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the second one passed away, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If I have another daughter, I will still marry her to Uthman bin Affan. That means Uthman bin Affan is no ordinary person. He is high level of Sahaba. An Humran Mawla bin Uthman bin Affan. This is the, the hadith. Uthman bin Affan has some employee yeah, who works for him. عن حمران his name is حمران أن عثمان بن عفان دعا بوضوء عثمان بن عفان ask yeah, حمران to bring him some water in a bowl or something yeah. فتوضأ and, uh, and after that عثمان perform an ablution with that, with that water because we talk yeah, two, we have talked two weeks or three weeks ago about the water two weeks ago yeah, that Purification or tahara, we do it in two ways, with water or with dust. With water, like ablution, uh, take shower for junub, yeah, 
and then clean the najis yeah, by uh, spray the water into the place that there is a najis. And second one is tayammum. Oh, sorry, dust. Dust is like tayam, tayammum. And the the talk about tayammum will come inshallah. So Uthman perform a wudu, yeah, ablution with that that water. Fagosalaka fihi thalatha maratin. And Uthman wash his hand until wrist three times. Thumma mad mada wastan thara. And all and after that Uthman, yeah. Gargling a water and inhaling it and blowing it out. Thumma gosala wajahu thalatha maratin. And then Uthman wash his face three times. Face start from here until when you touch your bone here. Yeah, this one not not your face because no one talk like this. Yeah, someone talk like like this facing when you face someone. This is called face waj thumma gosala yadahu al-yumna ila al-mirfaq thalatha maratin and then he wash his hand until elbow three times yeah and i will ask someone to volunteer tomorrow like next week yeah to do the uh, wudu and then we will put it in in the video yeah and everyone who watch this video can take a benefit inshallah yeah and ثُمَّ غَسَلَ يَدَهُ الْيُسْرَ مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ And after he washed his right hand, he washed his left, his left hand. ثُمَّ مَسْحَ رَأْسَهُ And then he wiped his head. ثُمَّ غَسَلَ رِجْلَهُ الْيُمْنَ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ And then he washed his foot, a right foot, إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ until ankle. Ankle, I'm sorry. Yeah, ankle is this the two things, two bones here. It called ankle. Yeah, inshallah, everyone knows. Yeah. And thumma gosal al yusra mithla dalik, and also the left side, same things like right side. Thumma qala, and then Uthman said after he finished the wudu with that way, he said, "Ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I watch." I saw with my eyes. Ro'aitu. Ro'aitu, yeah, means he watch. Not just listen or someone tell me about the way Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perform a al-wudu. Ro'aitu, I watch with my my eyes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tawabba'a nahwa wudu'i hadha. I saw, I watch Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perform al-wudu like the way I did just now. ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم، and then Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said، and Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said، من توضع نحو وضوء هذا، whoever perform the wudu like the way I did، same way، ثم قام، and then after he finish the wudu، he finish ablution، ثم قام فرك عرق عتيني، and then he stand after finish wudu stand to pray two rakah. Remember this. Don't forget this. Yeah. ثُمَّ قَامَ فَرَكَ أَرَكَعَتَيْنِ and then he stand to perform two raka raka rakaah salah. This is any salah. Yeah, two rakaah sunnah. Yeah. لا يحدث فيه ما نفسه and he didn't say anything. He didn't talk. He didn't call his friends about his business. Oh, how's my shop in there? Oh, how's the house? Didn't say anything. His focus after wudu stand to Perform a salah, didn't do anything, didn't say anything, didn't talk to his friends, didn't talk to his wife. Yeah, try to be focused. Go fear Allah. What he will get if he done these things after wudu and then pray to rakah? What he get? What he will get? Go fear Allah. Ma taqaddam min dambihi. Allah will forgive his past. Allah will forgive all of his sins. What he has. Done before. This is big reward. Yeah. There is another hadith. I will tell you. Yeah. After wudu, yeah, someone suggested. Yeah. Don't miss it. To read a dua. Yeah. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma min kumin ahadin ya tawadda." Yeah. If someone perform al wudu, fayus bigul wudu, and then he did it completely. 
ya properly like the way prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam done it that's why we learn yeah. and then thumma yaqul yeah, and then he said after he finished wudu yeah when someone combine the first hadith and the second hadith yeah start you said before after wudu he didn't say anything and then so salah this is exception after finish wudu and then he read this dua and then salah even more come complete because when he read dua it the it it it's not counted as as talking it's reciting dua talking means like when i talk with brother diki i talk with brother mustaqim for example brother haikal that talking a dunya things or something like that you know but he read dua what he read yeah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu illa futihat lahu al abwab al afwan illa futihat lahu abwab al jannati thamaniyah yadkhulu min ayha sha'a when we perform al wudu and we recite after finish ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu when someone recite this what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the eight doors of heaven will be open and he can enter it from do any way he wants to enter it eight doors of jannah eight doors of a gate of of heaven of jannah imagine there is a gate and you can enter from any way you want it's up to you yeah it's the reward that a lot of us miss it yeah so try to not miss it ya yeah? anyone can repeat the doa pak cik ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu mumtaz so this doa ya yeah? طيب and then zada tirmidhi in the another hadith al imam at tirmidhi give an additional uh, statement There is an addition of the hadith when we recite the dua we can add Allahumma ja'alni minat tawwabin wa ja'alni minal mutatahhirin That's the additional that's the additional it narrated in Tirmidhi yeah so when someone recite alha la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma ja'alni minat tawwabin wa ja'alni minal mutatahhirin. When we recite this insyaallah we hope ya yeah, by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala ya yeah, give us ya yeah, to choose any gate that we want to enter to paradise in the day after insya insyaallah amin. So uh, that's our talk tonight about uh, oh yeah so why we have to also wash the ankle and then the elbow yeah make it include inside our part of hand and the uh, feet because there is an hadith from uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's narrated by Abu Hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala an that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna ummati yawmal qiyamah that my follower yeah later in the day after ya'tuna ghurran muhajjalin they will comes up yeah ghurran muhajjalin ghur means when Gurun muhajjalin gur yani gurrah and tahjil if we see a horse yeah horse someone for example it's a brown horse but the face of horse white and also in the ankle four is white in arabic yeah the white things in the face it called gurrah when someone has a shining face and also shining hand and fit yeah imagine like we we see horse different color of the body my followers prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the day after they will comes up yeah they will come up gurun muhajjalin their face and their hand and their feet will shining min atharil wudu because they done an ablution al wudu when they are in the 
when they were in du in dunia. And then Abu Hurairah said, "Faman istata aminkum an yutila gurratahu fal yafal." Whoever can put an extra of the shining in his body fal yafal and then do it. So that's why when we yeah perform al wudu yeah don't say for example oh I just want to do like here just put give 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 some more to make sure every elbow it's washed by the water and also when it when ankle as well yeah just give some little bit extra yeah to make make sure yeah for yeah so inshallah yeah when someone perform this way of wudu yeah put right intention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then perform a salah reset the dua we will get this is only we, we we just talk about the wudu in Islam only talk about wudu and we have seen a lot of rewards that we will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is thousand of yeah topic in Islam thousand more even millions reward that people miss it we miss it yeah so by learning inshallah we know what we miss we try to yeah do it yeah try to not miss it again inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah will put us uh, with al mutatahhirin yeah people who clean their self yeah min tawwabin and people who ask forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the jannah with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i think that's from me tonight inshallah next week yeah we will start uh, with the practical uh, way of ablution, inshallah, and then the, uh, and then inshallah we will uh, explain about the. There is not mentioned in this book, but I will add some uh, more uh, knowledge about adabul khala, the adab, yeah, or the what. Adab like the adab adab the adab the ethic yeah the et yeah the ethic when we enter the khala toilet or bath bathroom yeah look at even the way we enter the bathroom what we have to do what we can't do in the bathroom yeah when we take shower when we do number one number do number two yeah everything is teach in Islam yeah that means Islam is very complete yeah teach us everything in our life to make sure yeah our life it's uh, will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's for me tonight yeah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and hidayah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a benefit from what we learned tonight I close this majlis subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh